Okay, let's talk about the review of literature, that 30 pages in your chapter two that kind of stares at you, that you think about, you worry about. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about my approach to writing the review of literature. Not to say that this is the approach and the best way to do it, but just to give you an idea of how to break down the literature review into manageable pieces and how to think about writing it so that it connects and aligns with the rest of your study. So I'll use examples from my study and hopefully that will give you an idea and help you think about how to write your review of literature. So the first thing you want to do is start by identifying your themes. I've included my very long purpose statement here um, but the purpose of my study ultimately was to look at the differences in work engagement of instructional designers based on whether they work mostly at home or mostly in the office, and then to look at the moderating effect of psychological capital on that relationship. So based on that purpose statement, these are the five the themes for my study. The evolving nature of the virtual workforce is tied to my independent variable, which is um, the two groups, those working predominantly at home and those working predominantly in the office. The second theme is focused on my target population. The third theme of work engagement focused on the research related to my dependent variable. The fourth theme of psychological capital looked at the research, of course, on psychological capital, which was my moderating variable. And then the very last theme looked at the research that on both work engagement and psychological capital, helping to build the justification for my study and also provided a transition from the literature review into the discussion of the problem space, which follows after the literature review in chapter two. Okay, so these were my five themes. And when you think about it, you've probably heard the advice that you need to think about your five themes each as like a six page paper. So if I have five themes, I write an introduction, I write about the evolving nature of the virtual workforce, I conclude that section and then I transition to the instructional designers. By the time I get through five themes, I have approximately 30 pages, okay? So, but let's break this down further. So when you have all your five themes, then you're gonna look at what you wanna talk about in each of your themes and start identifying your sub themes. So I'm going to I'm going to narrow in on my first theme here, the evolving nature of the virtual workforce. And I'm going to break down what sub themes I chose to write about. Okay, based on the research that I had found for the evolving nature of the virtual workforce, I focused on what is flexibility in the work environment. What does that mean? Then we looked at we I looked at the key research on flexible work arrangements. What does that mean? What is flexible work? What are the different definitions and research that's out there? Then I spent some time talking about the characteristics of a virtual work environment. So if you're working virtually, what does that mean? And then lastly, I talked about the characteristics of the successful, successful virtual worker. And this provided a transition to my second theme, which was focused on the instructional designers. So you can begin to see the logic and the transitioning thoughts as, um, as the themes break down, okay? So let's take it a next step further. You've got your themes, you've got your sub-themes. Now I wanna think about how I'm going to basically talk through each of these themes and essentially weave the story, okay? So thinking about the meal plan, which we've talked about in a different video, your topic sentence, your research, your analysis, and then a transition sentence for each of your paragraphs, I took the time for each of my sub-themes to think through all my topic sentences. What did I want each of my paragraphs to talk about and how did that flow through the theme, okay? So there's a lot of text on the page, but I want you to see this so you can start to see how I was thinking through this single theme, okay? So I introduced the review of the literature related to the evolving nature of the virtual workplace was important for the study as the number of employees working remotely has steadily increased, okay? And then I shared some research about increase of, of remote work. The next topic sentence is I wanted to talk about the world of work is changing. So after over the past 20 years, 
things with how we work have changed. Then I wanted to tie it to more current research and talked a little bit about the demands created because of the coronavirus pandemic and what pressure that's putting on the flexible workforce. Okay. So then I talked about from there I transitioned into the first sub theme, flexibility in the work environment. Offering flexibility is one way leaders can support their employees. And then I talked through the definitions of flexible or virtual work concepts in the research, teleworking, virtual work, and then a concept called the new ways of working. Okay. Then we transition over to the key research on flexible work arrangements. And this was a significant amount of writing, but you'll see that I connected different themes based on what I read in the literature and what I noted. Okay. Recent research on telework focuses on its relationship to job performance. So this whole paragraph is about telework and job performance. There's an ongoing question within telework literature about the measurement and management of productivity. Okay, so there's another area of research about how do we know when someone's productive um, when they're working virtually. Then in the contemporary literature, there are studies that focus on team level analysis for virtual work and individual level. So I talked about the research on the ind individual level, and you'll see here I'm starting to tie back to what is aligned to the purpose and the goals of this study, okay? Effective communication is critical for team performance. Early communication is specifically important in project teams, virtual project teams. I touched on research related to psychological capital in virtual work and also work engagement, okay? So tying those back to what research is out there on this theme tied to my two variables, okay? There's a small body of literature related to new ways of working and then the relationship between new ways of working and work engagement, okay? And then a connection from on psychological capital, new ways of working and work engagement. So looking at the research that covered all three of those. Okay, then it transitions to the characteristics of the virtual work environment. I'm not going to read each one of these, um, but you can see there's downsides from an individual perspective, positive aspects, organizational perspective, there's positive and negatives, creates value, leaders do need to address challenges, leadership is critical for success. And then it talks about the last part of this theme was characteristics of successful virtual workers. So each of these sentences here are the topic sentences for each of the paragraphs in this theme. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten paragraphs here. Okay, so we're breaking it down. The next thing that I did, now that I thought through my topic sentences and what I wanted to talk about regarding the research, was then to go and build out my transition sentences, okay? I'm gonna pop a bunch of these on here. Research has shown numerous positive characteristics of a virtual work environment. Then I would plug in the research. While there are positive aspects to working virtually for the employee, there are negative aspects as well. That's my transition sentence to the next paragraph, okay? From an individual perspective, research has shown there's also a downside. So saying the same thing just a little bit differently, show the research on the downsides to virtual work, and then I transition. In addition to the individual perceptions, there are positive and ne negative aspects at the organizational level. So now we're gonna look at the organizational benefits, okay? But virtual work is not beneficial for all aspects of organizational life. So now we're gonna talk about the negative aspects, okay? Then we're gonna transition into how leaders can implement virtual work, okay? It creates value, and you'll see, I went through the whole thing, I'm gonna put this all on here so you can, if you wanna pause and look at it, kind of read through. There's a topic sentence, I'm gonna plug in the research, and then I'm gonna transition. But I went through and did this because I wanted the train of thought to make sense 
as I went through each of my themes and I wanted to organize my thoughts so that each of my para paragraphs focused on one specific thought or topic. Okay, so I knew exactly what I needed to include for each of my paragraphs. Okay, so once I had my topic sentences and my transition or my ending sentences leading to the next paragraph, then you can go back and you can start plugging in the research that makes sense for each of those paragraphs. Okay, here's an example. And this is again, it's one click down. Research has shown numerous positive characteristics of virtual work environment. Here's a, oh, let's go back. Here's a citation from Ankan Men Menke et al. I reference a quantitative study by DeVries. I talk about a qualitative study by Gupta and Pathak. And then I mentioned that uh, virtual work was found to enable more work-life balance and lessen commute times. Okay, so some of the positive characteristics, and this gets me a full paragraph. One, two, three, four, five, six sentences, and it's got the research in there. Okay. If you can break down your themes to your sub themes, think about your topic sentences, think about your flow of conversation in your review of literature, and then go back and plug in the research that you found that fits all of those topics, your literature review will be complete. Okay, so this is just one way to think about it, one way to work through your literature review. There is a reference in the library that I highly recommend that you track down. I will put a link in the comments so that you can um, follow the link if it's still available. It's by Dr. Zena O'Leary, and it's a video that says, am I the only one struggling to write a literature review? And you can access it through the library. It's sometimes not available, so just save the link and go back and look. But it's certainly worth taking a look and... Um, watching her video and getting some additional suggestions, but think about your train of thought, thought and the flow of conversations and break each piece down so that it's smaller, um, that you can focus on smaller things as you build to the larger, bigger literature review. So good luck and uh, I will see you in the next video.